This morning, a video popped up in my feeds on YouTube, and I was listening to this gentleman, should I actually say gentleman, this person, this man, espousing the fact that men are predisposed to sleep with as many women as they can, that men are hardwired to sleep with as many women as they can. And he talks about how he has multiple girlfriends and he's communicating to a group of women in this particular case, as if these women should accept this behavior, this experience as just being the reality of things and to just deal with it. And I wanted to lean into this conversation because it made me really think about what does a commitment mean? What does a promise mean? When two people engage in a relationship, and they make certain agreements with one another. Do they keep these agreements with one another? Because quite frankly, how can you build trust with another person if you can't keep your agreements? Now, when a man is genuinely in love with someone and he makes a commitment to him, his word is his bond. Oh, let me, let me backtrack when I say this. When an emotionally healthy man makes a commitment to someone, his word is his bond. Meaning that when he says the words, I love you, and he's expressed an agreement to be monogamous and exclusive with you, he's not going to break that promise. Now, that doesn't mean that we as humans don't occasionally make errors, that we might say something and didn't follow through with it while we might make minor commitments. We certainly recognize the difference between, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to pick you up, uh, you know, I'm going to pick you up after work at six o'clock and they don't show up till 6.30, okay? Well, that's breaking an agreement, certainly in this particular case, and there might be some extenuating circumstances. But when you make big commitments to another human being, both men and women alike, an emotionally healthy person, his word is his bond. Their word is their bond. When they make a commitment, it comes from an honorable place. Certainly those big commitments. So a man who loves you isn't going to break commitments with you. And again, I should preface this by saying an emotionally healthy man. The reality is, is we're swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality. And we're certainly swimming in a sea of rhetoric out there, like this man who's espousing how men are hardwired to sleep with as many women as they can. Okay. Well, that's true. We men do desire that. But an emotionally mature man has what's called self-control. He has that capacity to go, you know what? What's more important to me? Does anyone remember that TV show? Um, God, I can't remember. It was called Tool Time. That was the actual show inside the show. I was with, oh, God, I can't think of the actor's name. But he had a neighbor where you can only see the top of his head, and he would talk to his neighbor every day. And I remember the neighbor said something. He says, you know, you can sleep with a thousand different women or you can sleep with one woman a thousand different ways. And that got me thinking, you know, in an emotionally healthy relationship, mm -hmm. couples actually find variety within their relationship. So there isn't that need to go out and spread your seed with everyone else. OK, like this man was, I said, espousing earlier. See, when you make a real commitment to someone your word is your bond. And yet, sadly, today, we don't see this. And I think part of the problem is couples aren't, they're, they're, they're dating from a short-term mating strategy. They're dating from a short-term mating strategy. Now, I know women have a propensity to desire commitment much more than men. And yet this short-term mating strategy, for example, is if I have sex with them, that will make him want to come back for more. And certainly that can in some cases be true, but that's not a tool to guarantee real trust, real bond in a relationship. So how do we make this happen, folks? I think it's important to recognize that love happens through a deeper emotional connection with someone. That's right, a deeper mm -hmm. emotional connection. Now I want you to think of the emotional connection you might have with a very good friend in your life maybe your best friend. Think of that emotional connection. This is a person that you feel safe enough to share your intimate secrets. And not that you have to share everything, but you have the, you're have you willing to share the intimate sides of who you are, knowing that you're not going to be judged, 
knowing that you're not going to be rejected, knowing that you're not going to be abandoned from this person, because speaking your truth from a kind place, and that's what we do when we speak to our friends, we speak typically from a kind place, we know it's safe. So then how do we build friendship with someone? Because folks, I'm here to say that the real, um, the real keystone to a healthy, happy relationship ultimately boils down to, am I with my best friend? Now, it doesn't mean you start off as best friends, but am I with a person who's literally as close to my best friend or one of my closest friends? That's what it should feel like. I'm just simply talking about what it should feel like. Now, I watched a video with Jay Shetty and he talks, it to, he says it takes about 40 hours of face-to-face -face time just to begin to get to know someone. And let me be clear when I say face-to-face -face time, it's not done through our devices. It's not done through text messaging. Now, FaceTime is close to this, but ultimately it's that face-to-face -face time. Now, if you watch my channel, I've always said it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust, the first layer of trust. Trust isn't just about fidelity. We talked about fidelity earlier. Trust is, can I count on this person to have my best interest at heart? So, and then Jay Shetty goes on to say it takes about 200 hours of face-to-face -face time to build a good friendship with someone. So what does that look like? It looks like doing social activities. It looks like doing hobbies. It's mutual interest, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in your personal and your professional life. That's what it looks like in those 200 hours. By the way, my coffee mug says, don't make me go all psycho roommate on you. I know it can appear that way in some of my videos. I go irate, I get very passionate, but I'm here sometimes screaming at the top of my lungs to encourage a more effective way to approach the mating process. Because as I said earlier, if you're, if you're operating from a short-term mating strategy, and a lot of men do operate from a short-term mating strategy, because we are a society of almost self-centric people, it's almost all about our own needs and not caring about the other person's needs. So coming back to trust, trust is saying, the other person's feelings matter to me as much as my own feelings matter to me. And how do we get there? Well, I think it's more important these days to have a long-term mating strategy. And a long-term mating strategy includes, right from the get-go, being radically honest with a person, laying your cards on the table, and establishing the rules of engagement. When two people like each other and decide that they want to explore a relationship with one another, then create the agreements within that framework so you know you're on the same page. Instead of this just sitting back in your feminine energy and waiting for a man to claim you. Okay, a man knows very early on, an emotionally healthy man knows very early on if he likes someone enough to explore a relationship. And if this man is emotionally healthy, he has the capacity to keep his penis in his pants, okay? And not have that need to go spread the seed. You know, the thing is, one of the fundamentals of being a man is self-control. It takes self-control just to navigate our emotions, to regulate our emotions. We have these capacities to do this for ourselves. Now, for some people, they have to go through training to get there. Maybe they go through therapy. Maybe they go through personal development work, self-help and spiritual work. In fact, it's kind of the crux of my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book in the recommended book section. Why am I sharing all this with you? Because it's time for a more grown-up approach. Sadly, we've been bombarded with this extra stimuli, this belief system that we have so many options because the swipe culture has created this misconception that we have so many options, this, this um, paradox of choice. By the way, right after this video, I invite you to go look up the video called Paradox of Choice on TED Talk. 
See, men oftentimes believe that if it doesn't work out with one person because it isn't easy, they can go find another one, another one, another one. And let me tell you something, after a while, this wears on our emotional well-being, this belief that we can have someone that you can re literally pr replace. And when I say it wears on our emotional well-being, what happens is, a lot of men lose favor in even wanting a long-term mate. This is why I invite you all to ask deeper questions in the early stage of dating instead of this cavalier approach that we should just have a good time focusing on having a good time. You know, let's just have a good time in the dating process and the cream will rise to the top. Well, I know for many of you women, you've approached it that way only to find out you've been hurt one time after another, after another, and after another. And that can wear on your emotional well being. So, how do we approach the process differently? All right, simply put, since online dating, dating represents probably 60% of all new relationships out there, is put together a stellar representation of yourself so you can be seen by single eligible men. The reality is, is in our daily lives, we are not in environments where we're surrounded by typically single eligible people, certainly for those of us in our 40s, 50s, and 60s. Certainly 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, when they're going out to clubs, they're socializing, they are, they have a propensity to meet more people. But for those of us older, it's a little bit harder. So yes, online dating represents the number one place to meet people. So put a good representation of yourself. Also, be open with your criteria. I will tell you that men and women are so darn picky these days, partially because the fact is everybody desires the most attractive mate out there. The reality is, is as we age, we don't look as good as we used to. So we have to remember that a good heart is better than a good looking face, if you will. An honorable person is more important than a good looking face or the height of a person. And a person with character is more important to how much they have in their bank account. See, these days dating oftentimes for men, men, by the way, men are guilty of hyper-focusing on looks. So let me not, you know, um, throw them under the bus. They do this as well. But at the end of the day, I invite you to just open your, make your net a bit wider from your current stance. And I know many of you say, well, Jonathan, I do that and I still meet a bunch of duds. Yeah, emotional maturity is quite lacking today. Dysfunctionality is what we're swimming in. Now, this can we can actually start to believe there's no one else out, no one else, no one out there for us. Yeah, you can start believing that. And guess what? If you believe that, there isn't anyone for you. Remember, those that achieve what they want, they set an inner goal for themselves from a positive perspective, from an optimistic perspective. I've often said in my videos, I want you all to start saying, it's raining great men, it's raining great men, it's raining great men. Because all you need is one great guy. You don't need to meet all of them. So if you start viewing men from a more compassionate place, and by the way, we have a significant percentage of the population that is bitter and jaded towards men and women alike, and then no wonder it's a dysfunctional dating pool out there. I just want you to know this. When a man genuinely cares about you and he makes a commitment to you, his word is his bond. He doesn't want to break his promise. And what's, what's lacking today for all couples, even those emotionally mature couples, they don't have a blueprint of how to build a healthy, happy relationship. This is why I want to recommend one more book before I wrap up today. Look, at, I know the title says Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by John Gottman. Take out the word marriage and just replace that with serious relationship. The seven principles for making a serious relationship work. Why is this critically important? Because when you understand the blueprint to a healthy, happy relationship, when you understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship, you can actually start adopting a long-term mating strategy. If for those of you who have a desire to be in partnership with one another. And then in the early stage of dating, I recommend, I'm, now I'm gonna recommend one more book. It's again by the Gottmans. It's Eight Dates. These are the critical conversations to have in the early stage of dating 
to determine if you're on the same page. Because remember when I said Jay, said he said, Jay Shetty said it takes 200 hours to get to know someone? Well, how you get to know them is by in, being inquisitive, inquiring into who they are. When I talk about radical honesty, laying your cards on the table and, and the rules of engagement, radical honesty simply means being vulnerable, authentic, and transparent to another human being. And transparent is simply, if it's material to the relationship or the, the forming of a relationship, then it's important to dive into it. That's number one. Laying your cards on the table. Look, we have to unpack our past relationships to get assessment of who this person is and where their past lies to see how their future will most likely unfold. And the rules of engagement is simply establishing your standards right in the, in the get-go, especially before you become physically intimate with someone. Because by doing this work, you build the deep roots of trust to form a healthy, happy relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please don't buy into the rhetoric that men are just predisposed to spread their seed and they have no self-control. When a person makes a commitment to you and you make a commitment to another person, of course, we're going to falter to some degree, but not on the big things. And sadly, all too often, men are listening to rhetoric like that. Women are listening to rhetoric like that. And it's no wonder we have a dysfunctional dating pool. I invite everyone to operate from a long-term mating strategy to ensure greater success in their love life. Is this sinking in? Thank you. All right. I guess uh, if it did, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit that notification bell as well. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.